And it's a pickup time of 1.30. Living and boring. Then they pick me up at 12.10. Suzanne Morris depends on rides to get to medical appointments each week, like the dermatologist, dentist, and eye doctor. Well, I use Ride to Care, and there's no bus service out here, so I'm pretty much stranded if they don't pick me up. But she says whether she actually makes those appointments depends on the day. The last three times that I've called them, I've been stranded. They've left me at the hospital for hours. It cost me money to get somebody to drive me home. Through the Oregon Health Plan, members have access to the transportation program Ride to Care. It provides TriMet passes, reimbursement for mileage or gas, and for people like Morris, car rides to their appointments and back. Ride to Care has, they take your orders, they have your address and everything, but then they're supposed to send it over to their contract drivers that they send out. Somewhere is getting lost in the process there. Another woman who wants to remain anonymous seconds Morris's concerns. I have a brain tumor, but you know, that's, uh, and other tumors, but um, I've learned to deal with that and try to have a positive attitude, but sometimes that's hard to do if you don't have any reliable people to depend on, and I would certainly say Ride to Care is not reliable. She tells us Ride to Care is late or a no-show for her about 25% of the time. The last month or so, I was I missed two doctor's appointments. But she says that's 25% too much. If you miss your appointment, you're waiting another two or three weeks, or you have to see a doctor that um, you don't already already know and that's kind of stressful. I have to say it is really affecting the quality of my life having to stress out about it. The Fox 12 investigators decided to see for ourselves if rides are showing up on time. We met up with Morris at her boring home for a 12:45 pickup time. The driver showed up early. She was also picked up from her appointment in Oregon City on time, too. Not here. But when we went out again to Morris's home a couple weeks later, a different story. They were supposed to be here at 822. It's 833 now. She couldn't get anyone on the phone either. I won't be able to wait much longer if I'm going to make my appointment. She ended up driving herself with a used car she tells us she recently bought. Tired of the waiting game. The taxpayers are paying for this, and I think that they need to know that we're not getting a good service. We sat down with Stephanie Van de Hay, the communications manager for Health Share of Oregon, the organization that provides resources to OHP members like Ride to Care. We've heard some people complaining about late rides or rides not showing up at all. What can you kind of say to that? All rides should get people to and from their appointments safely and on time, and anything less than that is unacceptable. Van de Hay says Ride to Care is now run by a local vendor after moving away from a national company about a year ago. There were similar issues. But she says it has gotten better since changing companies. In 2018, she says Ride to Care provided almost a million and a half rides. And on average, she says they get about four complaints for every 1,000 of those rides. Which isn't to say that those aren't important. We need to know when things aren't going right for our members so they can get care. Van de Hay says they've recently been working with Ride to Care to implement a corrective action plan, like soon placing a health share of Oregon employee at the Ride to Care Dispatch Center. Van de Hay admits that's where the problems usually start. I think it's a matter of working out technical assistance issues. Technical assistance issues that Morris says can't continue. I don't care you know, if you're healthy and you're going to the doctor for a checkup. When you leave, you want to leave. You don't want to sit in the doctor's office for three or four hours. And when you don't feel good, it's no good.